we're going to talk a little bit about health and fitness in Islam along, along with some sunnah foods, along with some sunnah diet. Okay, so here we go. First of all, I'm going to talk about a very basic day-to-day -day, uh, use of some sunnah foods, right? Uh, first of them being the black cumin seeds, which we also know, uh, know as halonji, right? So here we have, I have in front of me, this is how it is, you know, everybody knows how it is. So I get it from the market, you get it uh, from any spice market, you can just say, I need uh, kanonji. Okay, that's how they know it here. Okay, it's very good, mashallah. It is powered with many, many antioxidants. It is, uh, you know, a powerhouse of many health benefits. Okay. We know uh, as Muslims, kanonji is very much specified in the, in the hadiths. It is reported by the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Wasallam The mafum of the hadith is this that Kalonji is cure for every disease Black seeds are cure for every illness except death and, uh, Except if Allah has decreed a person will die Otherwise this is the best health uh, inclusion or health supplemental you can include in your diet Kalonji, uh, I mean black human seeds has many benefits Okay, I'll just number a few of them for you uh, it is good for your digestion, it's good for your stomach ailments, it's good for those who are diabetic patients, it's good for your nervous system, it's good for your heart, it's good for, you. it's good for your immune system, okay, it is even uh, very good for your respiratory health. So, I mean, I mean, etc, etc, there are a number of health benefits. Google it out, you will find it, mashallah. So this is the barakah and the blessing of sunnah food that you will have in your life. Include uh, black cumin seeds in your diet every day. How do you want, how will you have it? Yani, okay. Every morning on an empty stomach, you can uh, take some black cumin seeds along with some water. You can, uh, you can, you know, gulp it and have it. Or you can mix it with another amazing health inclusion and supplement, which is honey. You can mix kalonji with honey, mash it a bit and have it. You can also use it uh, in the form of kalonji oil. And there are a number of benefits. Okay. Uh, secondly, another uh, thing you need to include, another sunnah food you need to include in your diet is honey. In the Quran also it's mentioned about honey. When really in the valleys of honey is a drink wherein is a healing for mankind. Allah has revealed the benefits of honey in the Quran. Okay, so honey is again, you know, powered with many antioxidants, many, many, many beneficial ingredients in it. Okay, every day modern medical science is trying to find out a number of health benefits, and there are too many to count. People, one can even, mashallah, write a book on it. Okay, so include honey in your diet. Yes, the honey has to be pure. You know, mashallah, we have a lot of adulteration nowadays, uh, so you have to be sure how to find out what uh, actually. How do you identify true honey? Uh, if you happen to go to a market, or if you're lucky enough, if you live in um, a village side, okay, if you are part of any place which has ready access to organic honey, please go and get it and pack it, pack some of honey and get for your, uh, and, you know, store it at home and keep using it, okay? So uh, the honey which I use, okay, I'll just tell you about honey which I use. I actually uh, prefer manuka honey. Manuka honey is one of the best honey in the world. It actually uh, originates from New Zealand. Right. I also uh, try using uh, any basic organic honey uh, from Saudi Arabia, which is also known as Al Shifa honey. Okay. I also use uh, honey from, there are many different honeys. You know, I go out, I find out about it, and I leave that research to you. So, honey is a must inclusion. Okay. All right. So, and another thing you we have to remember, okay? Allah has specified for us in the Quran, in our deen, obligatory to have halal food. Halal food has many benefits, uh, spiritual and physical benefits. Of course, it's obligatory for us. So Allah chooses the best path, okay? He doesn't want us to have those things which are, which are harmful for us. Apart from the necessary halal food, which is obligatory, obviously, you also should have means of halal income. If you have halal income source, okay, if you are earning halal income, then it has many spiritual benefits also for you, okay? 
Uh, one of the reasons why our supplication is not answered is because we have a lifestyle okay, filled with haram. So try to make sure, uh, I hope alhamdulillah all of you definitely have halal income, mashallah. Uh, try to have as much halal source of income in your life and that is the way your dua will reach the arsh. Dua will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, it has many health benefits also, my friends. All right. So uh, another thing you should really include in your diet is olive oil, zaytun. You know, Allah Ta'ala talks about, yani, shaitan rajim, wa zaytun. Allah is taking an oath by, you know, wa wa zaytun in the Quran al-Kareem. Olive oil and olives should also be included in your diet. It has many health benefits. So you got kalonji, you got honey, and you got olive oil. Okay. What's next? Ajwa. Ajwa dates. Uh, dates are always, you know, packed with antioxidants and number of benefits. So please include dates in your diet. The best dates are ajwa dates. It has been specified in the hadith, especially about ajwa dates. Okay, so include ajwa dates in your diet. Okay, how will you have it? Every morning, uh, you can have it on an empty stomach also. Seven or any odd number of ajwa dates because odd numbers are specified in sunnah. So have, you can have uh, seven ajwa dates early morning. Mashallah, they are going to benefit you a lot. You can do some Google search on it and you can know much more, much more. All right, so try to have sunnah fruits also, my friends. Sunnah fruits, all my dear viewers. Uh, yani, papaya is there, melon is there. Melon along with dates are also very good inclusion. Okay? Keep having lots of fruits and vegetables in your diet. You focus on the sunnah fruits part also, all right? And... Uh, Another thing I would want you to include is uh, apple cider vinegar. Please include apple cider vinegar in your diet, uh, especially Bragg's. There's a brand name called Bragg's. Try to get that because they have the best organic apple cider vinegar. Uh, Bragg's organic, inverted commas, mother's apple cider vinegar. Bragg's apple cider vinegar organic. Please buy that. Please buy that. Please get it. It is the best apple cider vinegar you'll get. And it is, uh, it's going to give you a number of health benefits. Inshallah. Okay. Because if you have a healthy body, you definitely will contribute to your healthy uh, mental health also. Because body, uh, the zahir has uh, some sort of influence on the body. When we do wudu or when we clean ourselves, it has some impact on us. Right? When we clean our surroundings, it has an impact on us. So uh, physical cleanliness is part of the saying Atuhurul nisful iman Cleanliness is half of iman Obviously it includes spiritual and physical cleanliness both Well, uh, drink lots of water Drink lots and lots of water But, but, drink in a sunnah way Don't gulp water Don't drink standing Drink in three stages Okay, as the sunnah specified and in three stages, you should drink water, don't gulp it, and drink it, and eat food while sitting. There is great emphasis on authentic hadith. There are authentic hadiths which uh, give a lot of emphasis on drinking and eating while sitting, and of course, drinking in three stages, three steps also. You know, the prophetic sunnah of eating food is, uh, when you're hungry, eat food. I mean, that's what the, the, the hukama also say. When you're hungry, eat food. And before getting full, before your stomach is full, Stop eating. And the prophetic hadith clearly states, chew your food well before eating. Okay? Again, that also helps in your digestive system, doesn't it? A lot of benefits. So stomach has a great role to play in, in many, many, many health factors. Um, I personally uh, try to, as much as I can, to uh, include green tea, herbal teas in my diet. Okay? We, mashallah, you know, I come from Kashmir. We love having... Uh, special Kashmiri tea called Nun Chai. Okay, we love having uh, milk tea, which is very good, but there has to be a limit to it, right? There has to be a limit to it. Uh, you should include chamomile tea, I repeat, chamomile tea, and a lot of green tea, because they are loaded with antioxidants in your diet every day. And try to have, say, one or two cups of tea or herbal tea every day. Okay, and uh, early sleep. Early sleep and waking up early. Scientifically, medically, the benefits of sleep, sleep, uh, early sleep, have 
are many. Okay. Uh, the melanchon level from 10 p.m. to 2 p.m. is at the peakest level. Okay. After 2 p.m. or 3 p.m., it really is a superficial sleep. If you sleep 10 to 11 p.m., I'm trying to follow this guy, by the way. I'm, I'm struggling, but I'm trying. I advise you that you all should do this. I'm sure many of you already are. So 10 to 11 p.m. you can sleep, and you can wake up around 4.30 or 4 a.m. Mashallah, that's when the Fajr time is these days. So that is the time when you'll get most number of uh, amount of health benefit that you get from sleep, neurological benefits, your neurons as far as the neurons are concerned. Okay, the benefit you'll get from that sleep level is immense, is immense. Why do we wake up that early? I would say even wake up at 4 a.m. Do you know, uh, you can Google it out. Just type on Google, 4 a.m. Uh, business club, 4 a.m. Uh, corporate club. There is a corporate uh, group. Uh, around the world who wake up very early sleep very early and they list it as one of the main reasons uh, They get a lot of influential ideas Early morning around 4 a.m. When you wake up the level of the, the your cognitive abilities of your mind The neurological abil abilities of your mind are at its peak level. That's when most of your ideas come into your mind, right? So at that time you can tend some ideas and you can plan your day and mashallah you can carry on Allah's and also, one more thing. Do you know, do you know that in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ has emphasized uh, on uh, going out for work or carrying out with your business, that's what the mafum of the hadith is, early morning. The Prophet has said there, or perhaps there's a dua for the ummah in early morning. Or the hadith says, I will, I will quote the exact hadith in, 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 the, in, the, in the description, that there is blessing in the early hours for my ummah. So there is a blessing in the early hours. There is a blessing in the early hours. Please make use of it. I'm saying it to you and me as well. Okay, last, last, last point I'm going to focus on is tahajjud. Tahajjud and dena. Try to pray tahajjud. Uh, sleep early. Get up for at least 20 minutes. Pray tahajjud. Again, it has many spiritual, of course, benefits. Okay, you're drawing closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with every ibadah you do, of course. And there is physical benefit also. And the health benefit also. Every akam in Islam is loaded with n number of uh, spiritual and physical benefits. Physical benefit aids in your spiritual benefit. If you have a healthy body, as the hadith says, a stronger moment is better than a weaker moment, and there is khair in both of them. That's what the hadith says. There is khair in both of them. But if you have a strong body, a, a better mental health, you can contribute for the ummah more. You can uh, contribute for the Islamic society more. You can. Mm, First and foremost, make lots and lots of ibadat and draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, that's all for now, okay? There's more coming and uh, I'm going to end my talk with it. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.